A blessed day to all of you, brothers and sisters, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, here at Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is Wednesday of the third week of Lent. Our Mass presider today is Reverend Father Sherwin SVD. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. Before we continue our Mass, we pause for a moment. We acknowledge our unworthiness, our sinfulness. And for the many times we fail to follow the Lord in our life, we ask for God's mercy and pardon so that we are worthy to receive Him in these sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to, and to you, you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word through holy restraint we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Therefore, I teach you the statutes and decrees as the Lord my God has commanded me 
that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? However, take care and be earnestly on your guard not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let them sleep from your memory as long as you live, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He spreads snow like wool, frost his truths like ashes. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, especially to those who are also joining us in our live streaming through our Facebook page here in the Diocese and Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word. They said that one of the causes of failed relationship or broken relationship 
or not successful in their relationship is unfaithfulness. And unfaithfulness is caused by failure of fulfilling whatever promises or vows made to one's partner. Kaya kadalasan pag tinatanong mo bakit kayo naghiwalay or bakit hindi naging matug- matagumpay ang iyong pagsasama, laging sinasabi ng mga partners na unsuccessful sa kanilang relationship or having a broken relationship, they said, hindi, siya, hindi niya tinupad ang kanyang pangako. He, she is not faithful to his or her promises. Or marami siyang pagkukulang, puro lang siya salita at hindi sa gawa. Or some would say, hindi niya kayang punuin ang dapat niyang responsibilidad para sa kanyang pamilya. Kaya sabi ng partner, pupunuin ko na lang ang kanyang pagkukulang. I will fulfill what is lacking. Why I'm saying this, my dear brothers and sisters, because in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us that He came not to destroy the law and the prophets, or to destroy the covenant made by God to Israelites, which is a symbol of their relationship with Him. But Jesus came to fulfill it. Sa Tagalog pa, tutuparin at pupunoy ni Yeso Cristo kung ano man ang pagkukulang sa pagintindi at pagsasabuhay ng mga Israelita sa kanilang tipan or covenant kasunduan sa Diyos. Jesus said to His disciples in our gospel today, Do you think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets? I have come not to abolish it, but to fulfill it. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus came to give us full meaning of the covenant we made to God so that we can faithfully accomplish it. Jesus gave us a deeper, a wider, and even clearer interpretation of God's law, God's word, so that we can be faithful in our relationship with God. Pinunon ang Diyos o pinunon ni Yeso Kristo kung ano man ang pagkukulang ng mga Israelita sa pagintindi at pagsasabuhay ng kanilang ugnayan sa Diyos. At ito, at kung titignan natin, ano nga ba ang pagkukulang ng mga Israelita, ng mga Hudyo, sa kanilang pagtupad, sa kanilang pangako o kasunduan sa Diyos? Una ay ang kanilang lack of obedience to the giver of the law. They lack obedience to God as the giver of the law. Kulang sila sa tunay ng pagiging masunurin at pagiging tapat sa Diyos. The Jews during the time of Jesus, if we try to observe and read in the Bible, they are so meticulous, scrupulous, and even we can say very dedicated in following every letter, every detail of the law, Step by step, alam nila yung batas na binigay ng Diyos. They see to it that they observe it, the law that was given to them by God carefully. But they failed in seeing why God made the law, why God gave this law to them. The purpose of the law that God gave them in their life. And what is the core of God's law, which is for God, His law is all about love. The Jews focus their attention on what is written rather than on the purpose of the one who wrote it. Yes, they, do, they know the law externally. They faithfully follow it step by step. But what is lacking, they have difficulty in obeying God's will internally. Hindi nila isinasabuhay. Who, can, who calls them to love others, to serve others, and even to sacrifice themselves for the sake of others or to treat others equally. And this is what lacking. They fail to see the essence of why God made those laws, the core of God's law, which is love. And so when Jesus came, He showed the real meaning of the law of God. Jesus showed that obedience to the law must be put into concrete practice, concrete action. Isinabuhay ni Kristo 
ang pag-intindi sa batas ng Diyos. He loved all people, inclusively. He was so compassionate to those in need. He became a servant, not a master, serving others in His public ministry. And He came to sacrifice His life in order to show what it means to obey God. In short, sa dami-dami ng batas ng Hudyo, at alam natin na mga Hudyo, alam nila itong lahat, pero hindi nila sinasabuhay. Kaya Jesus summarized them, those many laws of the Jews, by saying, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus changes, my dear brothers and sisters, from the fulfillment of exterior precepts to the internalization of the law to one's life. Hindi mo lang dapat alamin, unawain ng batas, pero kailangan mong sundin ito faithfully by putting it in our practice, in our daily life, through our words, through our thoughts, and to our actions. The Jews was focused on paano sundin at gawin, pero nakalimutan nila paano ito isa buhay at isa puso ito. Like the Jews, sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, we are, some, we are sometimes more on external practices of our faith and in following the doctrines of the church, but we fail to internalize it in our hearts so that it will flow from our daily actions. Kulang tayo minsan sa pagsasabuhay at pagsasapuso ng ating pananampalataya at ugnayan sa Diyos. Yan ang kulang at dapat natin punuin upang makita natin kung ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng pagiging Kristiyano. Let us fulfill the law of our church with our concrete action and internalizing it deep in our lives. In the last part of our gospel, Jesus reminds us, Whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If we are then faithful in obeying God's commands, in doing our mission to share it to others, then our reward is not here on earth, not to be popular, not to be prestige, but our greatest and surest reward will be in God's kingdom in heaven. Let us pray in this Mass and in this Lenten season that we may faithfully follow our Lord Jesus Christ as our perfect model of what it means to be obedient and faithful to God's law. Gaya ni Jesus, nawa ang ating ugnayan at pangako sa ating Diyos ay tinutupad natin, isinasa buhay natin, isinasa puso natin sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay. Amen. Prayers of the faithful, let us pray to God our Father, the giver of all good gifts, that we may always obey His laws with the free attitude of Christ. Let our response be, Father, let us obey as Jesus did. Father, let us obey as Jesus did. That the church may bring to people the light of Christ by the preaching of the gospel. We pray. Father, let, let us, us obey, obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. That legislators may enact good laws for the benefit of the people. We pray. Father, Father let, let us, us obey, obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. did. That government leaders may implement laws and bring freedom and justice to their constituents. We pray. Father, Father let, let us, us obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. did that all people may come to know God and follow His laws written in their hearts. We pray. Father, Father let, let us, us obey, obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. did. That the sick, the deprived, and the lonely may be given due care, attention, and respect. We pray. Father, Father let, let us, us obey, obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. did. 
that those who died in Christ may receive love and mercy in the heavenly kingdom. We pray. Father, Father let us obey as, as Jesus did. did. In silence, we pray for our other intentions. We pray. Father, Father let, let us, us obey, obey as, as Jesus, Jesus did. did. Father in heaven, give us the grace to abide by your commandments and to foster your law and word among all who are placed in your care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, o Lord, we pray the prayers of your people, along with these sacrificial offerings, and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you love us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. Giving him thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving a thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace and the love of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, words of love, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been fed sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful, Merciful and, and compassionate, compassionate Father, Father we, come we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love by, by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strength and our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and in the whole world. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us, Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, and deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Saints Arnold Johnson and Joseph Renadimets. Pray for us. Please be seated for some announcements. With the theme, Sambayang Cristiano, gifted through baptism, nourished by the Eucharist, sent for the mission, the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, prepared the following activities in line for Holy Week this year. Holy Monday to Wednesday, March 29 to 31, Lenten recollection during the 6 p.m. Mass. Holy Thursday, April 1, 8.30 a.m. Lord's, 3 p.m. Mass of the Lord's Supper. The shrine will close at 9 p.m. Holy Friday, April 2, 8.30 a.m. Lord's, 9 a.m. Station of the Cross, 3 p.m. Veneration of the Cross, 6 p.m. Stabat Mater and Burol ni Jesus. The shrine will close at 9 p.m. On Holy Saturday, April 3, at 8.30, we will have the Lord's and the Easter Vigil at 8 p.m. On April 4, Easter Sunday, we will have the regular Sunday Mass schedule. For more information, please check the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word Facebook page. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads, we pray for God's blessing. Give to your people, O Lord, a resolve that is pleasing to you. For by confirming them to your teachings, you bestow on them every favor through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty and loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and be faithful to God's commandments. Thanks be to God. Saint
Joseph all uniting call on thee to hear our prayer happy saint in bliss adoring Jesus Savior 